Hi everyone, my name is uh, Dr. Ildiko Chiki. I'm the Chief Commercial R&D Officer here at City of Hope, and I'm here with Dr. Mustafa Rauf. He is an Assistant Professor of Surgical Oncology in the Department of Surgery, as well as in the Department of Cancer Genetics and Epigenetics at City of Hope. Um, today we will be discussing the use of robotics in cancer surgery. Uh, Mustafa, can you tell us how robotics have impacted the field of cancer surgery? Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, so robotics has been in use for a couple of decades. Um, City of Hope has been at the forefront from the beginning. In early 2000s, the robotic prostatectomy program attracted hundreds of patients uh, to City of Hope. Initially, the surgeons were using the robot for benign indications, but as they gained more expertise, they started expanding its role for other malignancies. And in um, We've seen over the last two decades a, a remarkable growth in the use of robotics in cancer surgery. In particular, uh, surgeons are using it now for most types of localized or locally advanced cancers. Thank you for that. And what value does the robot add to patient care? And perhaps you can also tell us a couple of stories that were really impactful to you. Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, in robotic surgery, the surgeon sits at a console and remotely controls the arms of a robot to perform the surgery. There are several advantages to this. The surgeon has access to up to four robotic arms that can be used to manipulate the surgical field and then perform essential steps of the operation. The high definition, magnified and stereotactic view from uh, within the patient can help see anatomic structures in finer detail. Uh, the movement of the robotic arms can be adjusted and uh, the movements can be uh, made more precise. Um, there's also improved ergonomics for the surgeon that can help reduce fatigue. So all these factors at the end of the day can help um, uh, make the, the surgery more um, technically precise and uh, reduce technical errors. Um, these are significant advantages from the traditional uh, laparoscopic or keyhole surgery approaches. Many operations that are challenging to do with the traditional approach are now feasible through the robotic approach. Um, we've also noticed that um, the conversion rates for some of the laparoscopic or minimally invasive surgeries to open has gone down. Um, so at the end of the day, it means less pain for patients, uh, shorter length of stay, and faster return to normal life. Um, I've had a few patients um, you know, who had been around um, you know, different places and came to see me for second opinion. And um, after discussing it with our, our team, we offered them a robotic approach. Um, for a traditional approach, these patients would have gone to have um, a week in the hospital, long recovery time. But what we noticed was that after a robotic operation, they were able to go home the next day, um, get back to their routine activities um, much more quickly. Great. How are we implementing robotic surgery right now at City of Hope? So my expertise is in gastrointestinal cancers and we use the Da Vinci XI system for most of our robotic work. Uh, my colleagues and I at City of Hope uh, have been pushing boundaries uh, for robotic cancer surgery. Um, for instance, liver section, um, as I mentioned earlier, for various primary and metastatic cancers are now routinely accomplished robotically. So these surgeries would otherwise require a large incision. The patients would be in a hospital for a week. And with the implementation of robotics, um, many patients are undergoing minor hepatectomies um, and, and can be discharged the next day. Similarly, for pancreas resection, um, for the tumors that are in the body and tail of the pancreas, um, they are considered suitable for robotic approaches. For those tumors that are in the head of the pancreas, it, the benefit is less clear, but we're systematically evaluating this. Um, for most colon, rectum, and stomach and esophageal cancer surgeries are now done robot uh, robotically as well. Uh, my colleagues in the head and neck and urology department are using a newer platform called the SP, um, Intuitive's SP system, or single port system that allows uh, use of robotic technology in narrow spaces. Um, we are evaluating its use and other indications on a clinical protocol. Um, in thoracic department, uh, my colleagues are using specialized robots for endoluminal bronchoscopy. And this approach uses an ultra, ultra thin uh, maneuverable uh, catheter that can be um, 
a position to get precise biopsies and hard to reach uh, places. Can you tell us any specific challenges regarding implementation of robotic surgery and how has City of Hope uh, established itself as a leader in robotic surgery? So, you know, as with any technology, a responsible implementation is necessary. Um, for any new indication, you need careful planning and monitoring, and this is paramount. Um, while the use of robotics can improve patient outcomes, not every patient is a good candidate. So at City of Hope, we use a team-based discussion and this is a cornerstone for appropriate patient selection. Um, what we need to do is every patient's case is reviewed at our multidisciplinary tumor board or surgical conference where the pros and cons of a robotic approach are discussed in detail. For a health system, a, a significant challenge is the cost of robotics. Um, once the robotic program is, is fully functional, um, the cost uh, can be mitigated by reducing length of stay for these patients. Um, nonetheless, you know, if, if the cost of robotic instrumentation is a major challenge, we expect that this cost will go down in the future as more um, manufacturers enter the market. Overall, where do you see the future of robotic surgery heading in the future? Perhaps even some of these surgeries being done autonomously at some point? Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, that's a great question. You know, we um, think that we're not there yet, obviously, with, um, you know, with autonomous surgery, there needs to be public acceptance of something like that. So, uh, but there's a lot of work being done on, on improving the robotic technology right now. For instance, um, uh, you know, haptics is not a part, um, or the feedback to the surgeon as they're performing surgery is not a part of currently used robotic systems, but is, is being developed um, uh, for the near future. Uh, additionally, augmented reality systems are being developed to help surgeons see um, beyond the tissue. And this is really important when surgeons are working in high risk areas, having that additional layer of uh, safety can, can make surgery safer. Um, uh, computer vision is another aspect that is being studied and developed. And this is where I think um, having go and no go safety zones within the surgical field will be very helpful to surgeons. Um, this technology can also be very helpful for the next generation of cancer surgeon, robotic cancer surgeons in training. So the future is looking exciting and bright. That sounds great. And thank you so much for your time today in discussing all these latest advances in this exciting new technology and looking forward to hearing more about it. Thank you again. Thank you so much for, for your time. Appreciate it.